Welcome back. Well, yes, indeed, Princess Atika Ajana joins us next. She is the Assistant Secretary Protocol and Event for the APC's Presidential Campaign Council. She is also a member of the Media and Strategic Communications Women Wing of the APC, among others. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning, Chamberlain. Thank you for having me. Hope your hairstyle is beautiful. Thank you. Oh, what a week it will be for your party. Uh, because at the moment, it, it does appear to a lot of people, and uh, perhaps you speak to that as well, as though what they are currently facing, it, it can be described, some think it's a typology of an existential threat for the party, if this is not handled properly. So, can the House divided against itself stand? Um, thank you very much. I'd like to say, first of all, we're not divided. That's what the opposition like to make others believe because our governors, some of our governors have come out to say, you know, uh, we, we feel the pain of the people. We are not going to uh, just go the way of the CBN governor or what the attorney general of the Federation have come to say uh, to the people. And so uh, people are now looking at the governors. These governors interact with the people directly. They deal with the locals. They know more than anyone, what people are facing. And then um, hearing from them is reassuring. That's what they have come out to do clearly. So we're not divided against each other. Uh, we're with the president, we're with him. We're just appealing. If you see what happened after the meeting with the national chairman of our party yesterday, you heard him appealing to even the CBN governor and the attorney general to just allow the interim verdict of the Supreme Court to stand for now. And we will still, we went ahead to appeal to Mr. President. I'm sure you all saw the podcast that came out from the president last night. That's, a, that's something very relieving. It shows that he's listening. And then um, so it's just the opposition. So, we're not divided. We're still together. But so very strong together. The, some governors and the president are clearly not on the same page concerning this currency uh, uh, currency with design policy absolutely if that is all division what is it absolutely like i told you uh chamberlain you have to come out and talk to the people even the president mentioned that he had seen the hardship that this policy has inflicted on the people and he's only seeking that we should be a bit more patient up till when with him he said there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel and i'm taking that very seriously because he smiled at the end of that uh a broadcast, he said there will be light at the end of the tunnel. So we are holding on to that. Okay. We still don't forget we have the 22nd. We're mm -hmm. waiting for the Supreme Court, uh, Supreme Court judges, I beg your pardon, to come out. So 22nd is still tomorrow. So we still have to next tomorrow to, you know, and we still have mm. four days to election. We're not perturbed. We're just worried about people who need to go about their uh, usual businesses, people who are, who've been planning to travel for election. You can't travel without cash. And then the 200 naira notes, how many of it do we even have in circulation? So is there any indication whatsoever, since you say that the president, I mean, the chairman of the party is appealing to the president, the president says he understands the hardship. Naturally, people will think or expect that the president will then make another statement concerning the 500 naira and the 1,000 naira notes, and perhaps in line with the Supreme Court decision, which says it. Just hold on. We're going to decide on this matter. Should people expect any further commentary on the part of the president about those scenarios? We are more concerned on actions than comments. I won't expect any broadcast from the president again. He has done a lot in 72 hours. He has spoken to us twice now. And um, we are waiting for the CBN. Not the president? Not the president this but time. Takes... No, the CBN. Yeah, they take orders from the president. But we are expecting the CBN governor to go back to Mr. President haven't seen what's happening on the streets of Nigeria. Uh, Chamberlain, lives have been lost, in case you're not aware. Just yesterday, a woman was almost leashed at um, Bariria Council in Abuja here because she decided to up her percentage to 40%. She was giving people, when you transfer 10,000 naira into her account, she gives you the equivalent of 7,000 naira. Just yesterday, she changed it to uh, 4,000 uh, 4, naira, that's 40%. And then the people got angry. He said, okay, she said she had to employ a security officer to protect her business. So that's cost. We also go into what she's charging us. And the news was everywhere. So um, the CBN governor is humane. I still want to believe that um, 
we will achieve the goal. They said it's going to curb insecurity, it's going to uh, curb banditry, it's going to boost our economy. But what it's doing to us right now is dividing us and tearing uh, our party apart. Mm. Well, you just already said that your party is not torn apart. I mean, no, no, for, no, it's making us vulnerable <laughs> in, in presence of opposition because mm. the PDP now have this, especially at selling point. I was in Okene recently, and then I was trying to talk to some people, and the, um, they went ahead to say, oh, no, we're not voting. We've been told that you put us into this hardship, that if you're coming, you're going to inflict more hardship on us. And I said, no, it's not true. Was it Tinubu that, gave the, that implemented the policy? Or did he even, he doesn't even know anything about it. So it's something we're looking, you should even vote for us because we are saying that we are against this. We are not against it in totality. We're talking about the time. Just allow the old currency and the new one to run concurrently. In for other now. words, you peop the people will still go through the hardship. It's just not now. No. <laughs> it seems that's what your party is saying. No, what we are saying is there will be soccer at the end of the day. If, I'm not even, I, I've been very mindful of using if, because we are going to win. When we win, I've seen uh, uh, spokespeople come on stage on, uh, on your studio to say, uh, they will be run off. Uh, they are looking at very close margin. They are, they are hoping to get 25%. We're not even looking at getting less than 50% from the 36 states of Nigeria, including the FCT. So it's going to be tight. It's going to be everyone have been, you know, entertaining fear. We have done our homework. We have a very celebrate candidate that have made the job very easy for us. He has a fantastic track record of performance. People have seen. We've talked about it. Lagos is there for you to look at. The people he has made are there for you to also look at. And this is a man that came to redefine what dignity in labor means. It's only in Lagos you see someone who is a conductor. He's having a, a, a law graduate as a wife at home because, you know, nobody's looking down on him because he's been respected. That's who Bola Ahmed Tinubu is, and that's what he's bringing to Nigerian people, and that's a sellable candidate. And we've done our job. We have over um, 176,000 Poly units around Nigeria, APC, I put it to you, not even the PDP, have enough structure on ground to go around um, the entire poly units. We have not, not one, not two, not three people, you know, at various poly units. So we're doing our, some are practicing a, a sectional, a regional politics, some are doing, using religious bigotry to, to divide Nigerians or to confuse people instead of convincing them. But we are not doing any of that. We're just doing our homework and we will win. Okay, so I find it very interesting. I want to go back to this policy. I mean, even though, I mean, there's so much that we can say about your candidates in terms of what a number of Nigerians have seen as his flaws. Uh, we could focus on that. But let's go back to the policy because I find it interesting that you decided to talk to, you know, appeal to the CBN governor when all of the time it is the president who has delivered his speech um, all of the time, it was the president who granted his own approval. Um, all of the time, it is the president who has given another, yet another little speech, I think lasting about two minutes, roughly a, less than yeah, three minute minutes speech. Yeah. Um, you know, all of the time, it is the president who has unflinchingly spoke about his support for this particular policy, even though he's appealing to Nigerians to be patient. Why is it that, you know, APC governors uh, or the APC as a whole, uh, why are they reluctant to have a meeting with the president to say, Mr. President, it is you who has put us in this jeopardy, not the CBN governor? Uh, Mark, hey, will you recall that some governors met with the president? Erufai said it. Governor Erufai, when he came on air, he mentioned that they were going to meet with the president what we are seeing is the court injunction, and that's not on the president, but on the CBN governor. And he was called upon. He went back. The CBN governor came into the country and went back to see Mr. President behind closed doors. And all he could tell us when he came out of that meeting was that um, uh, he had, you know, he emphasized the importance of this policy to Mr. President. And he was hoping that the president was still going to stand by the initial uh, agreement to let the policy slide. Is the president aware of how this policy is affecting the party during their campaigns? Oh, he, he said it clearly. He's been part of our campaigns, and then um, everywhere we've been to, apart from you seeing him on screen, 
you know there, there's we usually have when we go to receive him he has this side talk one-on-one -on -one talk with the candidate with the parties chairman even with the governors you know they come in in uh in the same vehicles these talks are ongoing if he's not if he's unaware of it he won't be making uh, the statements he made yesterday he said he is very much aware of the hardship no, i mean for the party your party's campaign how this is affecting the party's campaign. oh yes we, are, we have we've been we've been saying it everywhere the pdp especially because they are the only opposition i see as far as i'm concerned mm. we can't be talking about 93 million uh over 93 million people with pvc who are going to vote and then you want to go by what you have on social media of less than 30 percent of um of, of the population or even the number of people who have collected their pvcs or you're going by uh, a politician who is just you know, concerned about votes coming from one region or you're concerned about somebody who is coming to uh, tell us that they have integrity so they're not going to buy votes. Mm -hmm. We're not looking at the vote buying aspect. What we are looking but at... But the vote buying aspect is, is very important. And some people will say, I mean, we've seen what happened in AKT and um, what's really interesting. My, my colleague, um, my colleague, um, Coyote, I'm sure he'll have questions for you in a moment, witnessed some of it when he went to, was it Ikiti he went to? And um, it's, 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 it's an issue, it's a big issue. Some people have said that APC seems to be crying the loudest because they intended to buy votes in this election, that they have a war chest and what they really wanted to do was be able to sway the people with money. And that's why their cry is the, there are other political parties that have asked the president to Seen, but APC's wailing seems to be the loudest um, of, of all of the political parties that are crying. Because we are the party to beat. We are the party to beat. We are the party at the center. We have the president, the sitting president, who have approved this policy that has another effect on the people other than the initial aim of the policy. That's why we're crying. It's very easy for anyone to come today and say, um, if, like they are doing right now, they are doing it in my state so much. That's the only talking point they have now in Kogi State to say so it is APC have done this, APC have done that. And then they are looking at vote buying. How do you buy votes? You buy, you, you talk about vote buying when people are at the polling units. You, go to, you don't go to give people money from their homes. You don't go to uh, encourage people to come. No, the vote buying happens at the polling units. We are concerned about people even having access to go home having something to eat. You haven't eaten, okay, you won't leave your house to go and vote if you don't have anything at stake. But, you just sit back. But what we are saying is, who, who are the king buyers of votes? PDP, they started it. They started the vote buying. Yeah, what he saw in a kitty uh, played out during the governorship election, fine. It was a case of, um, in Nigeria today, we have to be very realistic. I had someone trying to compare election with American election. This is Nigeria. Malpe, if you... If you allow people to come and talk to your voters, I've seen where a family man came to the polling unit with his wife to come and vote. And they got there and a particular agent of a political party approached the wife and told her, if you vote for our party, I'll give you 2,000 naira. But you need to show me evidence that you've voted for our party. And you she know. turned to her husband and said, you know what, I'm not voting for your candidate. I need this money. Mm. So, that's what we're, so that's what we're talking about. It's PD. If if your party is crying about this policy, doesn't it then feed into this narrative out there that this policy is meant to hurt the presidential candidate of the ABC and confer an advantage on the other? Where that is coming from, should be the question you are asking, Chamberlain. Who has ulterior motive behind this policy, the implementation of this policy? That is not for me to say. But we all know what has played in the background. And we've heard great leaders come out to say, you know, the game players behind this have ulterior motive other than um, the initial purpose. As far as we are concerned, the initial aims have been defeated. The initial aim of this policy... What, what was the initial aim? Yeah, to curb insecurity, to curb crime banditry. When kidnappers uh, go for people, uh, when they kidnap, they have you right. in a... They have abducted, abducted your person... They will request for money, they usually ask for cash. Now they all know there is no cash in Nigeria. But it's not true. They're asking for dollars. Oh dear. They're asking well, for dollars. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll come back to some other matters, but let's uh, go to, uh, to Lagos. Our colleagues have got some questions. 
Well, thank you, Chamberlain. You know, the bit that, that saddens me the most, that experience in Ekiti State, for example, and see how much poverty has been weaponized such that people don't mind giving out their votes for what? Paltry. Well, for them, it's not even paltry. It's a lot. 2,000 naira, 5,000 uh, naira. It's, it's really sad. But I'd like you to speak to uh, this point because it comes across as though the thinking now within your party, and it's really strong the way it comes across, is that the president with this policy, I mean, whether we talk about the CBN governor or the AGF, uh, the box stops at the president's table. And I think all of us agree with that, whether or not we, we say it out there. And, and the thinking is that well, the president with this policy is sort of burning the ladder with which he used to climb uh, up to the position he's in now, being president, which he was re-elected uh, four years ago. And I mean, that sentiment comes across as though it's quite strong within your party and the conversation happens from time to time. And I wonder uh, for you, by extension, your party, do you think the president has done enough to prove that he's not burning that ladder or, in fact, just pulling that ladder in its entirety? I'm, I'm quite convinced. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think the president is doing just that. People are entitled to their opinion. I'll speak for myself. I don't think that's what he has done. I have been at um, four different campaigns now where the president himself was around. He was in Sokoto, he was in Bauchi, he was in Nasarawa. He's going to be with us in Lagos tomorrow. And next to him, he has said to those who care to listen, he also said it last night, that Bola Ahmed Tinubu is a believer in Nigeria. He is a true Nigerian, that he has known him for over 20 years, and he is also very much aware that he loves Nigeria and the people of Nigeria as much as he, uh, Mr. President, does. And he has also appealed to the people to vote for Bola Aswaju Ahmed Tinubu, when they were trying to misconstrue him with the videos that um, they brought out when he was in the UK, when he visited the UK, they just cut out uh, a part of his speech that said Nigerians should have a right to vote for whoever they wanted to vote for. They didn't give us the concluding part of that video. So a lot of people uh, took the video the other way around, but that wasn't what it was. You know, something led to that particular line, and I was very glad when the full video uh, came out. He's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He should, of course, ensure that there is free, credible, and uh, fair elections. And he, also, he also has the mandate to um, ensure that democracy is strengthened. People have right to vote. We're not forcing people to say, come out and vote for us. He is saying, I'm appealing to Nigerians to vote for Bola Ahmed Tinubu. This is a man I will want to, you know, hand over government to come May 29, uh, uh, 2023. So I don't think he will say one and do the other because he's Mr. Integrity, as we all know, he's the man of his words. He is the man of his words. If there's anything we don't have that about when it comes to President Muhammadu Buhari, it's his integrity. And he has said it. Time without number, and trust me, he's going to say it again tomorrow when he comes to the finale in Lagos. Right. And I'd like you to speak to Nigerians on this point. I think, uh, I mean, vote buying is real, and I think we should just admit that. And I think that's one of the challenges. Lots of political parties don't want to admit to that, and, and that way we can't even solve the problem, whether or not they call it vote buying, voter inducement, or just being kind to people, just providing food stuff whatever the case is, voter inducement is real, coupled with the poverty rate in our country. And I'd like you to speak to Nigerians pointedly this morning uh, and tell them, does your party have plans? Are they implementing plans? Have they set aside funds to either induce voters, be kind to voters by providing, you know, all of those things? Are there plans like that within your party? I'd like you to speak to Nigerians perhaps just to address that. There are no vote buying plans. We don't need to buy votes. In, I've been voting since 2003, and I have seen situations where people come with packs of water, plates of food for those who have been on the queue, on the long queue for a long time. And I've also said, I've also seen where people are swayed by some agents of other political parties. So you now have every agent being equipped to say, just in case, 
uh, people come to try to convince your voters. You go to, your, to the polling unit with members of your household and you will be shocked at the way people will, because they see you as a figurehead. Nobody will look at me today and then come to me for something and nobody will see anybody, any member of my family or any member of my community, so to say, uh, so to speak, and, you know, come to say, um, we're coming to buy your vote because they won't even listen to you because we have done a lot. The APC have done a lot, especially where I come from and where I stay in Abuja here and in Kogi State. We have what the party to beat. We have all selling points. We don't need to convince you. And it's not the money we we'll give you at the polling unit. We've been doing a lot of um, programs to bring succor to the people. We, we, we have water, we have good roads, we have the SIP and the pocket money. It's enough selling point for our party. So we're selling our party and then we're also telling people, as Wajibola Metinubu have been here severally, he has been to Kogi State, he has seen the people, he has also been to FCT. And the ministers yeah. of FCT and the governor of Kogi State are doing a lot. And you have a thousand and one uh, members of our party doing the same across board. So what we are doing is now for the election day. We have been preparing for this election since Stanley well, Memorial, and I, then we're positive. We're, we're you know, Ben many still say, look, there's still many challenges facing the APC. For instance, in Adama, what's going on with the governorship candidate? Is she still suspended? Is she suspended? Is she back? There's confusion there. It's, what's happening? Yes, the confusion is, is something, uh, it's normal. It's just some alarmists that are blowing it out of proportion. But she we was suspended. Yes, by the local government uh, party chairman. And his reason for the suspension is that she is practicing sectional politics. She's trying to bring segregation. And we all know uh, in the political parties today, especially like, uh, we, it's still part of the hardship that's been caused by this uh, policy. Oh. If you ask me by extension, yes. Everyone thinks, oh, you're a candidate of a party, so you have uh, millions uh, of money stashed somewhere to dole out to people, you know, for election. And then somebody is feeling uh, like his office is threatened or he's not being respected. So they want or, some, to share the money? or some other people, uh, you know, are taking advantage of relationship, personal relationship with a candidate. And a, but, but, you know, Senator Binani is, um, is an astute politician, you know. She is someone who knows her onions as well, and then she understands the rules, and she's been working by the book. So, uh, by the way, committees have been set up to look into it, and um, very soon you hear from us. So what, she, she's likely going to be recalled, but isn't that suspension oh. going to affect uh, her no, chances? It, no, no, it won't. Uh, Binani, if there is any candidate that is very sure now, is the people of Adamawa, they are more united than ever we were there. Uh, the Women's Supporters um, Forum of the APC were there to show her support. We were on ground, we went through nooks and crannies of Adamawa with her, and we saw the love. There is a tribe that doesn't even, that forbids women leading. That particular tribe took an oath, like, so to say, in our presence to say, you are the woman, you've done so much for us as a, a senator, so we will stand with you, we will stand by you, and we're sure that, you know. Many still wonder why you think that your party will win the presidential election because if you have different state governors who are singing from a different hymn sheet with the president some states are even spending the old diary notes as it were today and then they wonder so where then is your path to victory where what states are you think do you think that or you're so confident that your party will win because right now they say momentum is shifting Momentum is shifting nowhere, Chamberlain. What you all are seeing is what you are seeing on social media, what just hearsay, fallacies, that people want you to believe. We know what's on ground. We have 22 governors, remember? And then we have some other governors that are working with us that we're not going to mention. We're not going to tell you on air. They have their governorship candidates. They have their preferred um, senatorial so and if, house if of that's members. So if, that, if that's happening for other governors, how are we then sure that it's not happening for APC governors It's not happening for APC well. governors. It's not happening for APC governors because we are formidable, we're united. And then everyone have thrown their hats, you know, in the rings for Bola Aswajo Ametinubu. Look at our campaigns. Everywhere we go to, we accepted the 22 states that we have in Nigeria um, today. At least I can tell you categorically that I, I anchored 16 of those states, you know, the rallies. I, I, we usually arrive... Uh, a day to the rallies, and then we take uh, fillers from people around. Uh, we are we, right. we are the party to beat, and we've done our homework. We are still doing our homework. We will continue until election day. We will not just vote and go back home. We will vote. 
we will stand like we've been telling our, our supporters to ensure that our votes are protected and we have people because Bola Aswaju Ahmed Tinubu is somebody you can die for. So All right. we will well, we have to, to thank you for coming on. And then, uh, Princess Atika I'll come back Ajana. and celebrate with you guys after our victory. Well, Princess Atika Ajana is the Assistant Secretary, Protocol and Events for the APC's Presidential Campaign Council. She's also a member of the Media and Strategic Communications Committee of the Women's Wing of the APC. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Right, we're back in just a moment. Stay with us.